new main, file top, downer, highline, delete, snap, print, say it, hello world, done, save, start program. Hey, my name's Ben, and on this channel, I like to meld learning how to program with video games. Today, I want to show you how I'm using voice attack to be a better programmer by using my voice to help me code. And I'll guide you through how you can set this up for yourself. This whole idea started because I have this problem. I'm a professional software developer, and I also like to relax by playing PC games. So I end up spending a lot of time over here at my desk. And as I'm sure you can relate, being at the keyboard all day takes a toll on the body. So I do a lot of things to try and minimize the damage. I go to the gym five days a week. I also have this sweet adjustable height desk so I can stand up, sit down, or I have an active sitting chair that puts me somewhere in between. But even with all this, there are still times where I'd rather be chilling on the couch. Now, I grew up with an original PlayStation, so I still prefer the PlayStation controller. And I've never bought a console in my life, but I still have a couple of these PlayStation controllers around because they can connect to my computer via Bluetooth. So with these, I can play PC games from my couch. That's one of the reasons I play Rocket League so much, because I don't have to be at my desk to play it. So I'm always on the lookout for new PC games I can play with just a controller. I'm almost ready to start talking code, so stay with me. One day I was in the mood to play a space game, one where I could sit right in the cockpit like the old X-Wing games. And pretty quickly I found Elite Dangerous. So I started playing Elite Dangerous with my controller, and for the most part it was pretty sweet. But there aren't that many buttons on a controller, and even with using button combinations, I quickly ran out of key bindings for everything I needed. I could play for 10 or 15 minutes, but then something would come up that I didn't have a button combo for, like turning on night vision or something like that. So for a while I was playing with a wireless keyboard next to me. And I was definitely getting into Elite Dangerous, so I joined the forums and the subreddit, and the community already had an amazing solution to my problem. And that's how I found out about voice attack. Using voice attack, you can just speak commands into your headset, and it will recognize what you said, and it'll perform a macro that you've assigned to that key phrase. So it became really easy for me to just say night vision out loud, and that was tied to a key binding in the game that would toggle the night vision for me. I didn't need to find any more room on my controller or grab my keyboard to turn on night vision, and it worked great. Not only that, it really adds to the immersion of the game when you can command your spaceship around using your voice. So I've been using voice attack to play Elite Dangerous for a while now, and it's been bouncing around in my head, this idea that I might be able to use voice attack to help me program faster. So I finally had a chance to try it out, and it's actually amazing. I thought it would be kind of gimmicky, but no, it legit makes me a better programmer. If you don't believe me, you've just got to try it out for yourself. Not only does it make me faster, it's also less strain on my hands, I have fewer typos, and I don't have to look things up as often because I can save entire chunks of code to a single voice macro. I also feel like it keeps me more focused because I can use my entire presence to help me code, if that makes sense. Now, I didn't think I'd be the first person to come up with this, so I did some research, and sure enough, there's a talk given by Tavis Rudd in 2013 all about coding with voice commands. I watched his talk here on YouTube and even ended up borrowing some of his grammar. And this guy had medical issues that drove him all the way to figuring out how to code entirely with just his voice. I haven't gone that far with it. Right now, I'm using it more as a supplement to normal keyboard typing but you could definitely go entirely voice input if that's something you're interested in. So let me show you how you would do that and how I'm using voice attack right now. Voice attack is a paid program, but it's only $10 and there's a free trial you can download first to make sure it's working for you. So it's pretty reasonable. And I think the reason they're able to keep this so cheap is that they're not actually building the speech recognition part of the software itself. They're relying on the Windows speech engine, which is speech recognition that comes built in with Windows. And voice attack's really just supplying the glue between that Windows voice engine and the macros that you set up inside of it. And I should say, I'm not affiliated with voice attack in any way. Uh, so this video is just my honest opinion. And if you do buy this program, I'm not profiting in any way. So let's start by looking at the options real quick. And you get to that through the wrench in the corner. And then go to the recognition tab. And I've selected the show confidence level. That way over here in the log, as you're monitoring it, uh, each one of the phrases that voice attack recognizes, it will show you how confident voice attack is that it got that word correct. And you'll want to monitor the log over here, especially when you're first using the program to get a feel for how it works. So inside voice attack, you can set up different profiles to work with different applications. Right now you can see the profile I'm using is called Python, which is one I set up to help me program. And you can download my Python profile in the description, or you can just go ahead and create your own. But let me show you how I set up the commands I have so that you can go ahead and build something for yourself. Uh, so let's start by looking at my slap command, which in my profile, this just hits enter on the keyboard. 
So if I edit this command, um, you can see that it just presses the enter key and it holds it down for 0 0.03 seconds and then releases it. To set this up for yourself, uh, let's say we wanted to say the word enter instead to do the same thing. I would go up to new command. And in the top line here, when I say, in this case, I want to say enter, what I want to have happen is that we press the enter key on the keyboard. So I'll just click key press. And then in this window that pops up, I will just physically press enter on my keyboard. And you can see that enter here is what gets pulled up as the button that we're going to press. And then I set this hold down for just 0 0.03 seconds. So it's nice and quick. And then I just click OK. And then OK again. And so now if I say enter while I have voice attack running, um, it should just hit the enter key on my keyboard. So we'll apply that. Click done. Go ahead and enable voice attack so it's listening to me again. And then over here in our demo, see if I say slap. Slap. All right, got it there. I think you need to give it a little bit of pause uh, before you give it a new command. So I'll try enter next. Enter. Okay, so there it recognized enter and slap. Both of those will just click enter on my keyboard. One thing to watch out for is if I were to say like slap slap, uh, voice attack's not going to recognize that as uh, two separate slap commands. It's just going to come up as an unrecognized command. So to address that situation, what I've done in my profile is I've actually created uh, another command for slap slap. And if you look at it, it's just going to hit enter twice for me. So that was a pretty easy one. Let's look at another command here. Uh, so I have this new function command. And what this is going to do is it's going to quickly create a new uh, outline of a new function for me. Uh, so here I'm using the quick input. To get the quick input, I believe it's under other, voice attack action, and then quick input. And what this does is it takes a string that you give it and it'll just type that out for you. So if I look at this specific quick input that I have defined here, uh, here's the string that I want it to type out. And then it's also going to hold the keys down for the specified amount of time. And you'll notice in my quick input, I don't actually have a tab here before my pass. Um, that's because my IDE is going to add that tab for me as I'm typing this out. And then when I use this uh, command, what I usually want to do is immediately change the name of my function. So I have two more steps. I'm going to press the up key and then press the control D key, which is going to select that whole my function word for me. So it's ready for me to type in something new. Uh, so let me demonstrate this for you. Uh, so here I am in my editor. And if I say new function, you can see there that it, it quickly typed out um, the string that I had saved in that quick input function. And the my function words already selected for me. So I could just start typing uh, my new function if I wanted to. So the quick input feature is pretty nice, um, but it is still a little slow, especially if you have a lot of text that you want to input quickly. Um, so there's a solution for that. You can instead take a bunch of text and copy it to your clipboard and then just immediately paste that out. Uh, so let me show you how I'm doing that. in my new main uh, command. So I've set the Windows clipboard uh, to all of this code. And then the command after that is simply uh, control V to paste it out. And you'll find this set Windows clipboard feature under other, it'll be Windows, and then set a text value to the Windows clipboard. Uh, so let's look at another interesting command in my start program command. All this is doing is it's pressing uh, the control and alt and n all at the same time. So to do that, you would click key press and then on your keyboard, just literally hold down control alt n at the same time. Uh, and those will all show up here as being pressed and click okay. You can see it's gonna do it again. Uh, so I'll cancel out of that. But what those three buttons do, um, they just align up with a key binding I have inside of VS Code. So you'll see if I hover over this run code um, the key binding for that is control alt n so pretty simple. Uh, you can create some pretty powerful effects just by combining key bindings in your software that you're using. In this case, I'm using VS Code. Uh, combine that with some voice attack commands, and you can do some pretty cool things. Now, when you're picking the words for your commands, there are a few things to keep in mind. 
Um, it's usually a good idea to try to pick two or three syllable words instead of one syllable words. The one syllable words tend to get misunderstood more often. Uh, you also want to think about what words or letters you have trouble saying. For instance, I struggle with my R sounds. So instead of doing run program, I chose start program because I can say that clearly uh, more consistently. Things start to get more complicated when you start to use dictation. Dictation is when your computer listens to what you say and tries to type out exactly what it heard. So let's look at a command where I am using dictation, uh, the say it command. All this is going to do is it's going to start the dictation mode. And so when you start dictation mode, anything that you say after that is just going to be saved to a buffer. And then I have a companion command for this uh, called done. And if we look at done, that's going to stop the dictation mode. It's going to take whatever got saved into that buffer and put it in the Windows clipboard. Uh, so to do that, you use this curly brackets dictation notation to grab what's ever in that buffer. Then it's just going to paste it out and uh, you need to remember to clear the buffer so that those same words don't show up next time you use it. And when you use the dictation token, you have a few different options for formatting it. Uh, so you can make them all lowercase or all uppercase. And you can read about those options in the documentation. One thing that is a little unsettling when you're using dictation is that it doesn't actually print out what you're saying as you say it. Uh, so I'll give you an example here. Highline, delete, snap, quote, say it, programming is cool, done. Oh, I didn't quite get that one right. Highline, delete, snap, quote, say it, programming is cool, done. So as you can see, it doesn't, it doesn't work great. <laughs> But uh, apparently there is a way to get it to type out what you're saying as you say it. It just involves setting up some loops. And there's a discussion about it in the voice attack forums. So I'll link that here in the description of this video. So there is something you can do to improve the accuracy of the dictation. If you go to the options in voice attack, back at the recognition tab, uh, next to speech engine, click on utilities. You can see that there's a microphone setup, and it's good to do that first to make sure your microphone isn't too hot. Uh, and then once you've done that, you can go to Speech Engine Training. And if you're using the default uh, Windows Speech Engine, uh, this will give you a chance to go through and read some phrases. And by doing so, the Windows Voice Engine will understand you a little bit better. Uh, so I've gone through and done that twice. You might want to do it a few more times. And I think it does make a noticeable improvement. Uh, so some other things to watch out for. Let's look at my go to command. And what I want this to do is I want it to bring up the go to dialog inside VS Code, allowed me to say a line number and then bring me right to that line number. So that's how I've set up these commands. But when you go to actually use it, let me give myself some more lines here. So normally it works pretty well. I'll give you an example. Go to 15. Uh, but the problem comes in is if you want to go to a line that's 10 or under, It'll actually type that out as an English word instead of typing in the number. Go to five. See, that's a bit of an issue there. All right, I've got one more cool thing I want to show you. So when you use dictation, it obviously prints out what you say in normal English with all the spaces you would expect. But it'd be cool to be able to dictate like function names and variable names, things like that. And the default dictation options don't have any formatting like that, uh, so I found a different way. So let's look at my command called call it. In here, I'm going to start the dictation mode, and I'm just going to pause for three seconds. So I give myself three seconds to say the name of the variable I want. Uh, then it's just going to copy that to the clipboard and paste it out, pretty similar to before with the say it and the done. Uh, but I've got this one extra step here in the middle. It says inline C sharp function. I'll put a variable name, wait until execution finishes. So if we take a look at that, you can see here it's actually running some C sharp code that I wrote. Um, it's taking the value in the dictation. And then I'm turning it into just snake case because that was easy to code for. It's just going to take that dictated string. It's going to lowercase everything. And then it's going to take all the spaces and turn them into underscores. And then it'll go ahead and save that to a variable. 
And so when I'm adding the text to the Windows clipboard, I'm actually grabbing that variable instead of the dictation itself. And the way you get to that is under other, advanced, uh, execute an inline function. And you can see there you have an option for C sharp code. And this is obviously super powerful because we can run any code we want inside there. And it has full access to all of the other variables and state data that any of the other commands do. So with a feature like this, it really makes the possibilities endless for how we can use our voice to help us code. There's another feature too under other windows. It allows us to run an application. So here you could even write something like a Python script or something to do something. That's what I'm saying, saying something a lot. But you could write something to do something for sure. Uh, so really your imagination is the limit here. Some final thoughts here. You don't want to make commands for anything too dangerous when you get started with this. Things like uh, git commands or deleting files are uh, potentially dangerous because voice attack might misinterpret you, mishear you, uh, and you don't want to delete a bunch of stuff or commit a bunch of code when you're not actually wanting to do that. You also don't want to start out with too many commands because you'll have a hard time remembering them all. Uh, I found that about 20 at a time, do that for maybe a week, that's, that's a good rate to learn new commands at. Keeping your command list small uh, also has the benefit of less likely that you'll overlap commands. If you keep your command list small, there's also just less chance for interference when you're doing dictation. And as for which commands I find myself using the most, uh, the copy and the paste is uh, just really convenient to do with your voice. And then also undo, I just find handy to do that using my voice. I'm also looking forward to finding more cases where I can copy in boilerplate code using just a voice command. That's all I've got for now. Let me know in the comments if you're going to give this a try. And I'll see you next time.